Hello everyone, happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. Am I audible and visible everyone? Let me just see. I'm not able to see the live chat. Give me a minute. Yeah, a quick nod, a quick confirmation if I'm audible and visible to everyone, if I can get that. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. So here we are into the fast five quiz uh, uh, discussion. Uh, we have had the quiz on the app. I hope all of you have attempted the same. Can you let me know how did you fare in the quiz? How did you find the questions? Out of those, just those five questions, this is like a quick, you know, a quick productive break from your routine that you have. So you should definitely be attempting these quizzes basically to see how well you can apply whatever you have learned uh, to the new questions because that is what you'll be facing in the exam as well. Thank you so much uh, Amudin, uh, same here. So how was the quiz? Very good Shagun, that's pretty awesome, 4 on 5, so which is the one question that you got incorrect. So uh, uh, what I've done with this quiz basically is when we are discussing, the PDF is already available on the app. You go to the featured classes section. You will see this fast five and also the previous fast five ka PDF attached there. Okay. So Surya, like I said, uh, you will find the PDF of this quiz and the previous quizzes also in the app itself, in the home screen itself, in the featured classes section you will find the PDF being attached there. Oh, sorry, the app is uh, not working currently because of the server being down. Um, so you will you will get it once the class is over. Don't worry on that. Otherwise, I'll, I'll share the PDF on the uh, Telegram channel. Right, I'm doing it right away. I, I'm sharing the PDF on the Telegram channel so that you can get it from there. So it's done. You can get it from the Telegram channel. Okay, all right, no problem uh, for those who could not attend the quiz, never mind, we are going to discuss it here. All right, so without any further delay, let's start the discussion and before that, a quick update uh, for the students uh, uh, on the heavy demands, we have launched the four months plan, right, considering the upcoming NEET PG and the FMG exam, it's only at 2799. Uh, right, this is inclusive of all your GST and everything. So, 2799 for four months, which is hardly like 700 per month. And the previous subscribers, please remember that you can avail these four months plan using the code HOLY. You can avail this plan at even lesser price, less than half the price of this. This is for the subscribers whose subscription has ended and they want to renew it. Remember, there's no extension plan. Ki your subscription is active and you want to extend it. Aisa nahi hai. Once the subscription is over, then only you can renew the plan and you can use the code HOLY while you are subscribing. Absolutely, yes, doctor. Please do it at the earliest. Okay? Yes, Dr. Ress, I'll, I'll update you about the same as well. Okay, let's start with the first question. So, like I said, to make this discussion more productive, uh, to every question, I have added the relevant snippet from the first aid book as well. So that it's also your important high yield snippets, tables from first aid USMLE book that we are going to revise along with this quiz. Okay. okay. Yes. So, look at the length of the question. It seems like a lengthy question, but actually, if you see, it is just the last line which gives you the crux of the question. So, always, always, please try to use this trick in your examination halls. Whenever it is lengthy questions, 
start to read from the last line okay that is very very important so start reading from the last line because you might not have to read the entire question as well it's a it's a time saving trick especially in inict exam when you have 45 minutes 45 minutes ka time block you have really uh, less time do follow this trick so which of the following muscles best contributes to the lateral rotation of the thigh so this is what the question is asking i really do not need to read the entire question and this saves me a lot of time so lateral rotation of thigh is a function of which of these muscle gluteus minimus gracilis pectineus or piriformis it is piriformis remember piriformis is a lateral rotator it is not gluteus minimus okay which gluteus is a lateral rotator it is not gluteus minimus but it is gluteus maximus which is the lateral rotator okay that is the external rotator or the lateral rotator is gluteus maximus medius and minimus are the uh, internal rotators right the medial rotators so let's have a quick look this is your table from the first aid so this is fast 5 so based on first aid you have this quiz as well right so look at this one the external rotation is done by iliopsoas gluteus maximus piriformis obturator internus or obturator externus so you can remember this as external rotators e i o okay the vowels e i o so that is basically the external rotation is done by iliopsoas o is the obturator internus obturator externus external rotation remember is gluteus maximus we write maximus as m e x right so to remember that it is an external rotator okay it is an external rotator maximus is a external rotator and you have piriformis which is which is an external rotator so piriformis remember p i r is a paradox of internal rotation that means it is external rotation p i r paradox of internal rotation opposite of internal rotation external rotation is this clear with everyone so how do we remember the external rotators of the thigh e i o external rotators are iliopsoas and obturator muscles piriformis paradox of internal rotation and maximus is your external rotator remember gluteus medius gluteus minimus these are your internal rotators along with tensor fascia lata all these three muscles you know that these are supplied by superior gluteal nerve and what test do we do for this the gluteus medius minimus which are the abductors basically we do the trendelenburg okay we do the trendelenburg and uh, that's how we have discussed as well okay so this is about this question here right so abductors medius and minimus are predominantly abductors while maximus is an extensor so remember for gluteus maximus is your ex and ex it is an extensor and it is an external rotator extensor and external rotator is this clear with everyone right and very important this image has been asked in the exam like how do you identify the piriformis muscle is actually this triangular muscle that you have where is it inserting it is inserting on the greater trochanter okay it is inserting on the greater trochanter and another important point when there is piriformis syndrome which nerve gets compressed because of this in the piriformis syndrome another important question remember it is sciatic nerve going beneath the piriformis is the sciatic nerve very very important so piriformis syndrome is sciatic nerve is another point that you should remember okay we read piriformis obturator vagera gluteal muscles ke sath so remember gluteal region piche aata hai sciatic nerve okay that's the sciatic nerve is this a clear with everyone right give me a quick thumbs up if this is clear so that we can go on to the next question right so remember we have learned that maximus is extensor and external rotation the external rotators is eio maximus and piriformis okay right all right let's go to the next question now a simple one liner fact a one line in your books 
that has been asked as this clinical question okay so what is the question asking again if it's a lengthy clinical question i'll read from the last line this patient most likely has a mutation in the gene that encodes which of the following proteins so here the last line does not help me uh, to answer this question when the last line is not helping in a lengthy question go to the second last line and ECG shows a long QT interval. So now I get a clue somewhere that this is asking about the long QT, the congenital, the long QT one. So remember the most common for long QT is your voltage gated potassium channel which is affected. Okay, it is potassium channel which is affected in the long QT. So remember this long QT is like potassium qt is ot potassium is affected potassium channels are affected in the long qt syndrome now this boy also has deafness along with the long qt syndrome that so can you tell me what syndrome is this guys when you have long qt plus deafness snhl what syndrome is this is this romano ward or is it the other one what syndrome is that yes correct so remember you have this romano ward syndrome and the gerwell lang nielsen syndrome right in congenital long qt so in congenital long qt look at this first aid cast snippet no shagun this is gerwell lang where there is snhl as well so what are we trying to read here is in congenital long qt syndrome it is most commonly due to loss of function mutation of the potassium channels what does the potassium affect in the action potential? It is the repolarization. We know that. Depolarization is sodium calcium. Here repolarization. Okay. And remember that you have Romano and you have Gerwell Lang syndrome. So Romano ward. Remember Romano is no SNHL. Romano is no SNHL. Ward AD is your autosomal dominant. It is autosomal dominant, no deafness here. In Gerwell and Lang, AN, it has and SNHL also. Gerwell and Lang, JER, ER is AR, this is autosomal recessive and there is SNHL also. Okay. So remember you have the two syndromes here, the Romano ward and the Gerwell Lang. Okay. So this is autosomal dominant, no SNHL. And this is autosomal recessive and SNHL which is present here. QT is potassium, OT. QT is OT that is potassium channels which are affected. Another channelopathy that we should know in the heart is the Brugada syndrome. And can you tell me what channel is that which is affected in Brugada? This is loss of function of sodium channels. Brugada syndrome is sodium channel SCN 5A, right? Sodium channel wala 5A is what is affected here. Even this is autosomal dominant, right? And what do you see in the ECG? Remember, ST elevation is seen in leads V1 and V2. So the Brugada syndrome can present, like it can lead to sudden cardiac death and that is why we need to put a ICD, okay? So please remember that Brugada DA Brugada syndrome is DA is NA that is sodium channel while QT is OT that is potassium channel. Okay, so Brugada is sodium and QT is your potassium channel. Is this clear with everyone? So the answer here basically is voltage gated potassium channels are affected here. Right? Gap junctions are present in the heart which allow the communication from one cardio, uh, cardiac cell to the other cell, cardiac muscle to the other cardiac muscle cell. Remember, gap junctions are present in heart. Okay? Clear with everyone? So, we have seen this question along with the snippet from the first aid. Give me a quick thumbs up so that we can move on to the next question. Yes, okay. 
going on to the next question this is your third question here all the questions here i've put it as lengthy clinical long stem questions basically to develop our skills and to have that practice of reading the long questions also so even in the recent fmg exam also you see that the questions are more clinical now okay so all these lengthy questions learn this trick last line second last line is very very important which of the following molecules is the most likely cause of adhesion to the endothelial surface at the site of inflammation again like the first question the last line gives me the crux of what is question is trying to ask me right if i look at the options cadherins extracellular matrix selectins and g protein it is not cadherins it is selectins okay this one is selectin i know that majority of you are confused between a and c remember cadherins are the ones which are cell adhering cadherins are cell adhering that is it is intercellular connection which it helps basically if this is one cell this is one cell it helps in the intercellular connection so remember it is calcium dependent adhesion wale molecules right this is not the adhesion of the cell to the endothelium for cadherins the question is specifically asking that when there is inflammation right what happens when there is inflammation any site of inflammation we want the wbcs coming in so the wbcs from the blood have to attach to the endothelium and they have to migrate die pedesis and they have to go to the site of inflammation so we are talking about the wbc adhering to the endothelium right so where is the selectin present where is the selectin present it is present in the endothelium remember you have e selectin p selectin and l selectin i'll show you the snippet from first aid which is very important okay yeah dekh lo a margination and rolling both see the best answer here has to be selectin out of all so a uh, leukocyte extravasation this is your snippet from the first aid again so the extravasation predominantly occurs at the post capillary venules where the extravasation takes place what are the steps you have margination and rolling okay first the wbcs are marginating rolling and marginating then there is adhesion then there is diapedesis and the wbcs are migrating okay so we will we will quickly see this table this is very very important uh, right you have significant questions important questions here so for margination and rolling basically in the vasculature you have e selectin and p selectin so you can see here that this is the endothelium this image is a very good explanation of this you have e selectin you have p selectin in the endothelium which binds the wbcs what is that uh, what is that substance to which it is binding on the wbc this e selectin and p selectin remember these selectin selectins are binding to silyl sialyl lewis x so selectin binds to ss the sialyl lewis x and this is what is defective you we have read in immunodeficiency disorders in the medsynapse app main videos as well this is defective in leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 so very very important remember that in lad type 2 the sialyl lewis x is what is so uh, defective okay there is deficiency of that so type 2 remember <laughs> is the second type and it has the sialyl lewis x which is defective which is deficient so first one here is the selectin selectin and the sialyl x and that is lad2 next comes the adhesion the tight binding and this is what is defective in lad type 1 where there is decreased cd18 so again from our videos in the app cd18 remember 18 is 18 is adhesion deficiency and it is integrin basically which is a defective here okay this is lad 1 okay this is lad type 1 where it is cd18 the integrin wala which is defective so cd11 cd18 integrins are defective here the the substances on the vasculature are icam1 and vcam1 so remember the icam and the vcam 
ए ए वाले दीज आर बेसिकली फॉर अडेशन ओके दीज आर फॉर अडेशन ना सो दिस इज वॉट यू कैन सी ह्योर द आई कैम वन एंड ऑन द डब्ल्यू बी सी यू हैव द एल एफ ए वन विच इज बेसिकली योर सी डी इलेवन सी डी एटीन वाला विच इज डिफेक्टिव ओके विच इज डिफेक्टिव so lfa and icam responsible for adhesion the tight binding then comes the dipedesis that is this is going outside the vessel dipedesis the trans migration and this is where you have pcam so for dipedesis it is pcam1 which is responsible right and remember that pcam1 is what cd marker you can remember this as pcam1 m1 when i rotate this m it becomes 1 so this is cd31 okay so p cam is for dipedesis okay this is for dipedesis has been asked in the exam previously is this clear with everyone see margination ashish understand the terminology margination matlab the wbc is going to the margin of the blood vessel rolling and margination and then will come the माइग्रेशन माइग्रेशन मतलब चले जाना बाहर माइग्रेशन मतलब बाहर चले जाना ठीक है सो रिमेंबर देन विल बी द माइग्रेशन एंड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन हैज बीन आज इन द एग्जाम सो मेनी टाइम्स द कीमोटेक्टिक फैक्टर्स विच कॉम्प्लीमेंट इज अ कीमोटेक्टिक इट इज सी फाइव ए विच इंटरल्यूकिन इट इज इंटरल्यूकिन एट विच ल्यूकोट्राइन इट इज योर ल्यूकोट्राइन बी फोर ऑल दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट so complement ka c5a interleukin 8 and it is leukotriene b4 which are the chemotactic factors has been asked in the exam many many times okay it has been asked in the exam many many times these are chemotactic okay so c5a interleukin 8 and it is b4 okay b4 right so you can remember this as before 8 is 5a so leukotriene b4 interleukin 8 and 5 so before 8 comes the 5 so remember it as before 8 is 5 so this is leukotriene b4 interleukin 8 and complement ka c5a very very important okay so is this clear with everyone this table one table from first aid you can see how uh, concentrated uh, information you have here this is very very important okay this is very very important so the best answer here basically which is uh, uh, right the question is saying the leukocytes initially localized to the site of inflammation because of the endothelial adhesion molecule that binds the ligands on the surface of leukocyte so the best answer here is selectin okay the selectin and look at this one l selectin l for leukocyte l selectin is present on leukocyte while the e and the p selectin is in the vasculature okay the endothelium okay clear with everyone we have seen some cd markers also here cd11 cd18 lad1 cd31 sp cam1 okay and we have seen the chemotactic factors okay so this was about this question an important point for cadherin remember cadherin which is attaching the cells if there is loss of cadherin this is what is responsible for metastasis okay so e cadherin the claudin wala low e cadherin hota hai jisme it has a poor prognosis the breast cancer mein hum padte hain theek hai अथर्व महाराष्ट्र है एक नंबर पाउन राइट हाँ ठीक है गोइंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द फोर्थ क्वेश्चन हियर सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द मोस्ट लाइकली डायग्नोसिस and the question is the lymph node shows neoplastic cells that are positive for keratin and also for epstein barr nucleus uh, epstein barr nuclear antigen this is a 63 year old having bloody nasal discharge right and a physical examination may there are lymph nodes in the neck so when you have an elderly patient okay when you have an elderly patient 
with bloody nasal discharge, with cervical lymph nodes, you should always think of nasopharyngeal carcinoma and it is telling you that it is keratin positive and EBV positive as well. So the most important clue here, this is EBV positive and EBV associated. Of course, even Burkitt's lymphoma is EBV wala associated. But remember that Burkitt's will present with a jaw swelling and it would be generally a child. Okay, correct. And uh, this is going to be nasopharyngeal carcinoma which is EBV associated. What does the keratin positive tell me? That this is a type of squamous cell carcinoma arising from the squamous uh, epithelium in the nasopharynx. And that is why this is keratin positive. Okay, that is why this is keratin positive. Is this clear with everyone? Can you tell me the triad in the uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma? What is the name of the triad and what are the components of the triad? We have seen this in um, short short also. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is what triad nasopharynx? I say imagine that nasopharynx when the carcinoma is happening, throttling is happening. So that is trotter's triad. Okay, that is trotter's triad. The components are NPC itself. N4, what is N4? What is P4 and what is C4? Very good. Samters can say Nidhi, watch the short short. Samters nahi. Samsters is your aspirin sensitivity, nasal polyps, asthma, wo sab. Trotters, very good. Trotters mein kya kya hota hai? What is the N for? Neuralgia, trigeminal wala. Then there is palatal palsy, ipsilateral palatal palsy. And there is CHL, that is conductive hearing loss. That is conductive hearing loss. Please make a note of this. In this triad, it is not the sensory neural hearing loss, it is conductive hearing loss. Why? Because the NPC, the nasopharynx mass is blocking the eustachian and that is why like the serous otitis media, it is leading to conductive hearing loss. Okay, so remember for NPC, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it is NPC which is the triad and this is Trotter's triad. Generally, the treatment for your head and neck cancers, remember this general that for head and neck cancers, generally the treatment is radiotherapy, right? Radiotherapy is important here. And uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma has an association with EBV. Kaposis sarcoma, which was asked in the recent NEET PG also, it's going to be a HIV positive uh, patient. Kaposis is associated with HHV8, while Epstein-Barr virus is what HHV? Epstein-Barr virus is HHV. 4 okay it is hhv4 okay and kaposis sarcoma is your vascular wala tumor which appears blue purple color wo palette wala image aaya tha recent exam mein okay it has the spindle cells okay it has the spindle cells okay so this is about this question coming to the snippet from your first aid the fast snippet reading about epstein barr virus hhv4 Okay, the transmission route is respiratory secretions, even saliva. So, also called as kissing disease. Kissing common in teenagers and young adults. Right? So, the clinical features, it causes mononucleosis infection. Infectious mononucleosis where there is fever, hepatosplenomegaly, lymphadenopathy. And remember in lymphadenopathy, especially the posterior cervical lymph nodes. Remember, there is risk of splenic rupture. EBV is associated with lymphomas like Burkitt's lymphoma. Even the Hodgkin's lymphoma, it is associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma and also the lymphoproliferative disease. And also remember the primary CNS lymphoma. It is also associated with primary CNS lymphoma. So, Burkitt's nasopharyngeal lymphoproliferative primary CNS lymphoma it is associated with all these cancers. Okay, and what is the receptor for EBV? What is the receptor for EBV? What CD marker? Very important. Remember, it is CD21 present on the B cells. Okay, it is CD21. Very good. So, remember Epstein-Barr affects the B cells through CD21. Okay, 
on the peripheral blood smear what do you get an infectious mononucleosis is atypical lymphocytes which are not the atypical lymphocytes do not represent the infected b cells but these are the reactive cytotoxic t cells remember the important test here monospot test in infectious mononucleosis which is basically for heterophile antibodies okay and in this case if you use amoxicillin presuming that there is uh, this is a streptococcal pharyngitis okay because it can be pharyngitis ho sakta hai. so if someone thinks that this is streptococcal that is a bacterial pharyngitis and gives amoxicillin remember with amoxicillin there can be a rash which can come if you give amoxicillin in mononucleosis so remember mononucleosis is monospot test positive that is heterophile antibodies okay so kissing disease heterophile file fillers matlab loving okay so kissing disease heterophile monospot is all mononucleosis atypical lymphocytes are present remember this point and ebv is associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma is what i want you to remember as well okay very very important because it is squamous cell arising epithelium arising that is why it is your keratin positive and also epstein bar positive so elderly patient with bloody nasal discharge lymph nodes ebv positive is nasopharyngeal carcinoma is this clear with everyone right let's go on to the last question now okay let's go on to the last question here again a very interesting question again a simple concept a one liner concept but that needs a application in a question like this what do you think is the diagnosis here guys based on the question agar aapne quiz solve kiya hoga so what do you think is the diagnosis here Is this staph aureus, Naveen? Don't do silly mistakes. What is the causative organism and what is the diagnosis? Very good. Very good. It is a super antigen. Kiska super antigen hai ye? Kiska super antigen hai ye? Is it staph aureus? Is it staph aureus? No. Next time I ask you the question, what is the causative organism? This is not staph aureus, Surya. This is gram positive cocci in chains. Staph aureus is in clusters, the grape like clusters. This is in chains. This is streptococcus pyogenes. Remember, staph aureus, streptococcus pyogenes, both have, uh, uh, you know, the TSS, wala, the super antigen. So, the diagnosis here basically is toxic shock syndrome. Okay. So, how do I know this is toxic shock syndrome is look at the blood pressure, toxic shock, there is a component of shock because of the toxin that is a super antigen, right? And there is multiple organ dysfunction, creatinine is high, bilirubin is high, so there is organ dysfunction which is there, along with that you can see what is the question saying next, there is diffuse erythematous rash. Okay, there is the skin lesions as well. And what is the cause? There is erythema and edema from the dorsum to the knee of the foot. So, basically, this is streptococcal cellulitis leading to toxic shock syndrome. Okay, this is streptococcal cellulitis leading to toxic shock syndrome, which is because of the super antigen. And remember, super antigens, why are they called super antigens? Because they cause cytokine storm. Because they cross link, they bind to the antigen presenting cells, the MHC2 also and the T cells also. So, they bind to the T lymphocyte receptor and also to class 2 MHC molecules and that is how they cause cytokine storm. Both of them are activated. So, look at this image which will clarify this. Yeah. So, normal antigen and in toxic shock syndrome what happens? Look at the normal antigen presenting. What is happening here? Yes, yes, MHC2 or antigen hai, 
टी सेल रिसेप्टर ऐसे बाइंड कर रहा है जो सुपर एंटीजन है दिस इज एक्टिवेटिंग योर एंटीजन प्रेजेंटिंग सेल ऑल्सो एंड द टी सेल रिसेप्टर ऑल्सो सो दैट इज वाई द टी सेल दट प्रोड्यूस योर इंटरल्यूकिन टू इंटरफेर ऑन गामा the antigen presenting cells presenting interleukin producing interleukin 6 and tnf alpha so in the normal antigen presentation only 0.1% of t cell population is activated while in the toxic shock syndrome the super antigen wala 20 to 30% of the t cell population is also activated and that is why you have the cytokine storm which comes into play is this so clear with everyone right so remember that the super antigen basically is binding and activating both the mhc2 and the t cell also so this is the super antigen now coming to cellulitis kaise samajh mein aaya based on this erythema and edema on the foot say knee pe jo erythema edema ja raha hai that is telling me that it is cellulitis caused by streptococcus and because of that now the patient has fever confusion right toxic shock syndrome ke presentations so look at this snippet again from the first aid integrating with the first aid super antigens causing shock right one is staph aureus and another one is streptococcus pyogenes remember it is streptococcus pyogene viridans nahi pneumonia nahi streptococcus viridans ya pneumonia nahi So, aureus, उसका टॉक्सिन है टॉक्सिक शॉक सिंड्रोम टॉक्सिन इसमें भी होता है एरेथ्रोजेनिक एक्सोटॉक्सिन ए ठीक है सो बोथ ऑफ दीज बेसिकली इट क्रॉस लिंक्स द बीटा रीजन ऑफ टी सी आर टू एम एच सी क्लास टू आउटसाइड द एंटीजन बाइंडिंग साइट सो देर इज ओवरवेलमिंग रिलीज ऑफ ऑल दीज मॉलिक्यूल्स लीडिंग टू शॉक सो इन टॉक्सिक शॉक देल बी फीवर देल बी रैश देल बी शॉक ठीक है सो in uh, in your uh, yeah and in your uh, this one the streptococcus pyogenes ka toxic shock syndrome remember that this is a toxic shock like syndrome associated with painful skin infection like in this case we saw cellulitis in staph aureus toxic shock syndrome what is generally the history the use of vaginal tampons or nasal packing even this has been asked in a recent exam so whenever it is vaginal tampons ka usage think of staphylococcal when it's a skin infection like this it is your streptococcal wala is this clear with everyone so in staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome again you have fever you have rash desquamation shock end organ failure there is vomiting and diarrhea also the toxic shock syndrome affects the liver affects the kidney right is this a clear with everyone what is the toxic shock syndrome so staph aureus and streptococcus pyogenes so remember that with streptococcus pyogenes remember this also causes scarlet fever erythrogenic exotoxin a scarlet fever which has the sand paper like rash there is circum oral paler all these are the important findings in scarlet fever okay so toxic shock syndrome is staph toxic shock like syndrome is streptococcus in streptococcus it is because of the cellulitis the skin infection in staph aureus it is the usage of vaginal tampons and or nasal packing ka history which is important there the super antigen binds to mhc2 and t cell receptor both resulting in a lot of cytokine release is this clear with everyone right so these are the five questions that we have seen today a quick review here that we have seen so lateral rotator external rotator piriformis maximus right and remember eio piriformis syndrome compresses the sciatic nerve then you have long qt is ot potassium channels are affected in brugada da sodium is affected romano is no snhl gerwil and lang is and snhl present selectins are the ones present on the endothelium which are over expressed in inflammation binding the wbc right selectins ss bind to the cialis levis x this is defective in your lad type 2 lad type 1 adhesion wala which is the next step cd18 is defective here dipedesis is pcam1 m1 is your cd31 migration 
chemotactic factors remember uh, before 8 5a these are the chemotactic factors before 8 5a the fourth one we had elderly patient with bloody nasal discharge cervical lymph nodes keratin positive ebv positive is nasopharyngeal carcinoma trotter's triad npc and then we had the next one which is fever confusion shock erythema cellulitis wala streptococcus wala toxic shock like syndrome because it is in chains remember it binds to t lymphocyte and also the mhc class 2 leading to overactivation a cytokine storm okay so that was about this one Tika, ashish you're not able to message on telegram just drop me a dm i'll try to resolve that so this was about the today's session guys i hope you have liked this fast five as well so if you want to solve the previous quizzes you can do that on the med synapse app they are available for free in the quiz section and uh, the videos along with the pdf are also available in the featured classes so i'll upload the annotated pdf also for this session on the app in the featured classes quiz solutions me aapko iska annotated pdf mil jayega now what is the next plan that we have yeah so when do we have the next class uh, let me quickly tell you about that so tomorrow that is 30th uh, we have at uh, yeah so what is the next plan let me tell you about that so we have the next in app live session for the subscribers right for the med sign app subscribers we have the fast dedicated session which is on molecular biology where we will be discussing about DNA part, the relevant part important for your exam, the DNA replication, uh, DNA uh, repair, wo sab hum discuss karne wale hai. this is going to be uh, tomorrow at 11.30 am itself, okay, tomorrow 11.30 am and after that on 31st, okay, this is tomorrow that is 30th. On 31st, according to the ongoing subject wise timetable, we have anesthesia which is pending. So, we are going to do anesthesia PYQ of AIMS exam KBMD, which is going to be at 7 pm. Okay, which is going to be at 7 pm. And then on 1st, uh, we will have the next fast 5 is going to be on the YouTube session, is going to be next fast 5 on 1st, and that is going to be at 7 pm okay that will be at 7 pm the fast five uh, on youtube at 7 pm so this is the plan at least for the next the two app sessions and the youtube live session that i have told you about okay clear with everyone tomorrow this is a class i've told you the plan for 30 31st and first okay Sagar, the team is working on it. As soon as it's done, I'll definitely update on the Telegram group. Okay, some things are beyond our control. So, we are trying to resolve that. Yes, Naveen, uh, for all the subscribers who had subscribed in August and September when we had launched the app, don't worry, in the month of May, like before your subscription ends, we will renew, we will extend that till your exam. Okay, so that will be extension. Ho yes. On 1st of April, correct, I also have on the Prep Ladder YouTube channel 12 noon. Uh, so, on the Prep Ladder YouTube channel at 12 noon, we have the Radiology LRR INICT session. So, Radiology LRR on the Prep Ladder YouTube channel at 12 noon is what we have. And then in the evening, we will have the Fast 5. Yes, Preeti, they are. Okay, definitely, there are going to be a lot more sessions like this, the Fast 5 sessions. Okay. So, please do watch all of them. They are available in a playlist on this channel in the fast five. You can watch all of them uh, uh, together from that playlist. Okay. So, see you all uh, the subscribers tomorrow on 30th for molecular biology, the DNA part at 11.30 a.m. Okay. So, thank you so much everyone for joining in and uh, goodbye. Take care. Keep studying. Keep revising. Keep synapsing, and keep winning. Thank you.